today I become the dead. I mean the richest man alive. So as you guys can see in the top left, it is currently day 1263. Yeah, I was on day 1300 or 1302, I think I ended the last episode on. But while I was playing the other day, right after I uploaded that episode, we had a very short power outage where I live, and it actually knocked out my game while I was on it, and I guess it somehow corrupted that save file. So I had to load a backup, which is quite unfortunate, but I loaded the backup, I finished the cathedral, had about uh, maybe 15 or 20% left to build on that backup. <laughs> really stunk. But we got it there. And then I went out and hunted a ton of wither skeletons. Finally! Finally, finally, finally! Yes, as you may have guessed, we are gonna be fighting the Wither. So I have got enough skulls to make three Withers. That's nine Wither Skeleton Skulls. So, needless to say, I'm terrified. We're, we're talking the Bedrock Wither, baby. This guy is, uh, actually menacing. <laughs> so, uh, to get started, I don't even have a bow. So let's break down a little bit of gold and sell it to some of these guys so I can get a few emeralds on hand. And I am going to be moving these guys into my cathedral so that I can trade with them nice and easy with all my rotten flesh and a lot of my gold. But, uh, not, not right now. These guys absolutely suck to deal with. And now we buy some bows. Now we're in the upstairs of our starter house and let's go ahead and, uh, enchant some bows. Run. Now we need to buy a mending book. I think it's from you. Nope. Nope. From you. Yes. 34 emeralds. Oh, I need my book. As I was saying, 34 emeralds. I do not know if there's a worse price that you can get for a mending book, since mending is like a level one book trade. <laughs> but, um, yeah, whatever. It is what it is. I mean, right here, I've got prop four. And he's selling it for 10 emeralds, but before that I think it was like 30 something. Because uh, these guys, they were part of my uh, my party that happened in my house during the 100 days. And the party at my place must have been off the chain, because the next day, everybody had a disease. So more likely than not, those will actually be a couple of the only villagers that I have left that have ever been or will ever be cured in the game. Because I've never stated this before, but I'm just going to say it right now. Villager trading is so, so, so broken. Everybody knows it. You know it. I know it. We all know it. The reason it's broken, though, is because of curing. If we didn't add curing to the game, then it would actually put a trade value into everything you get. You don't want to trade a whole shulker box of stone for a couple stacks of emeralds, but you do it because it feels more right than one stone for one emerald. Or maybe I'm just weird, maybe I'm just an idiot. But either way, that's my logic on it, and I'm putting mending on Pew Pew, so that I do not, I, I don't want the infinity enchantment, I wanna be able to repair this bow and have it forever, cause I don't even use bows very much. Since I don't use bows very much, I'm not gonna be using these kinda arrows. No, we're going to be using tipped arrows, because tipped arrows are where it's at, man, and I've never really gotten to mess around with them too much. So obviously, uh, the Wither is an undead-style mob, so we have to use health to combat the Wither, not damaging. So, yeah, we're going to be using instant health potions. I put them in a cauldron. Who knew that you could make tipped arrows without a lingering potion? By just putting them in your cauldron. A whole stack at a time with a full cauldron. Alright, so now we got a great bow. I don't want flame on it, really. I don't think there's anything else I need on it. We got our stack of instant healing arrows, which is pretty nice, with instant health 2 on them nonetheless. So that should do a hell of a lot of damage to the wither. I've got 60 golden apples. I'd really like to get 64. There's two. Come on, where's some- oh yeah. 
Let's see, 24 iron blocks. Hmm, that'll make me six iron golems if I can find pumpkins. So now with some strategy in mind, I'm wanting our big mining project to be down below this building here. Yes, I, I know, I know guy, it's not a show. Hey, get back to work, dude. Anyways, we've got a large underground mining project that I want to happen in this episode, because if you didn't know, uh, it's kind of a, kind of an ongoing trend on YouTube right now to mine 10,000 ores in a single episode. Now, this being said, we are going to be the first to do it in Bedrock Edition. At least I haven't seen anybody post a video of that, so that's what our plan is for today. Let's do it, man. And, uh, it starts down here. Now, my main goal in mind with this challenge is to change my net worth from being absolutely dirt poor all the way to being disgustingly wealthy. But with the vast amount of wealth I was desiring, I would also need beacons in order to properly flex that wealth. But like any sensible soon-to-be wealthy individual, I went ahead and employed others to do my dirty work for me. Alright, there we go. We have the area cleared, and I've got my six iron golems kind of set up hand-in-hand hand like that. So all we'll do is we'll run through and hopefully pop pumpkins in the right spots on the ceilings, and we'll be able to unleash the golems. I am so nervous. I am so nervous. I need to put my chest plate on. But let's do it. Okay, he appears to be in a wall. Where's he at? See what I mean? Where's this guy even going? Come on. There he is. He's in sword mode. All right, now is our time to shine. Let's go over here and try to get our golems. Now, even with six iron golems, there was still a fatal flaw. Come on. Over here! I built the iron golems too far away from the wither, so he couldn't properly pathfind over to him. He left me no choice. I had to take him out myself. Come on! We almost got him! Yes! I'm gonna stay right here. Nice! Nice. Dude, we did it. And there's another star. Oh, he broke so many blocks! <laughs> What the hell, man? Now, the chunks that I fought the wither in was loaded back in 1.16, so we should have diamonds near y equals 11 and towards y equals negative 58 or so. Sadly, it turned out we did not uncover any diamonds during this wither fight. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and fight another. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, we got him in sword mode. Come on, tear through. Yes! <laughs> Oh, that is amazing. Get him. Get him. <laughs> Get him. Can they take him? Oh my god, wither skeletons. I forgot these guys spawned. Oh, the lag. The lag. I gotta get some entities. Dude, they killed him. <laughs> Hell yeah. Dude, that is so cool. Look at all these blocks. All right, a few of our guys. I can only find three of them. So I think only three survived, but we're going to heal you guys up and you shall be our defenders of the deep. I am not going to lie. Number one, that was an epic battle. <laughs> and number two, it was also really, really useful because we were able to pull a couple of nether stars out of the deal so we can make a couple more beacons. But we weren't done yet, because what is better than two beacons? Why, three beacons, of course. So I went all the way down to the deep slate area underneath of where I fought the previous two withers, and I decided to take him on yet again to get that third nether star that I desired. My victory was swift and his death was glorious, providing us with our third desired nether star. Then the only things left to do was build up our beacon, provide ourselves with haste too by giving sky access, and then clear out a bunch of space to make way for the tunnel bore.
right, ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you <laughs> that this was no small project. So as we can see, this is one unit of a tunnel bore, and it is linked up. We've got a bunch of the units all linked up together. Now, when I say I did this a lot, I mean I did this a lot. Here, I decided to go ahead and go with a two-wide tunnel bore, and yeah, I think I got a little bit, uh, a little bit carried away over here. And we've finally reached the end. <laughs> and look at all of this. Oh my god. So in total right here we have got 350 diamond doors right there. And this is from our 117 tunnel bore. Then we've got a bunch of goodies right here with some iron and all that stuff and some coal. Look at all the deep slate coal that we got from this. <laughs> So this block is a lot more rare nowadays, but in the 117 chunks, you can get it like candy. Like, as soon as the uh, the stone turns to deep slate, you can find tons of coal, uh, deep slate coal down there. In fact, I might have a ton of it in here, yeah. <laughs> I've got over nine stacks in my barrel that's not even included in there, because I'm not, uh, not including any ores that I already had. I know, my... This is, this is why I needed the 10,000 ores, by the way. <laughs> oh man, I think I just wrecked Bob with a trident. I'm so sorry, dude. There we go. <laughs> oh man, that could have ended his life. But this brings our grand total to 4,198 ores. Then we move on to the caving in 1.18, which actually I did I did not enjoy as much. I, I, ju I just, I got bored of it too quick. <laughs> but we got a handful of diamond ore there, and, you know, decent amount of other ores. Just kind of a, kind of a mix, a mix and match of all sorts of different ores. Lots of copper, lots of iron, lots of coal. Kind of as you would expect. I tried to not go for so much coal and copper, but I do like the blocks. I do like having them. So for our caving, if you add all of this up, we got a grand total of 2,964 ores, which is not too bad, not too bad. I'm, I'm good with that. But these last two are the ones that I am most excited about because they were from our tunnel bore. I ran the tunnel bore in 1.18 chunks, down really low, and I got addicted. slightly addicted you don't find that much ore you get a lot of deep slate but oh man the hall is magnificent we got tons of redstone look at all that redstone and then we also got this <laughs> tons and tons of diamond ore look at all that i've never had this much diamond in my life so this right here is a grand total of 532 diamond ore which makes both of these boxes all together a total yield of 2,975 ores. And when all of these shulker boxes are combined, we come up to 902 diamond ores and 10,137 ores in total. And oh man, I am so excited to build these up and break them down. In fact, I might just do it over here <laughs> because I think that'll be super cool. My god, would you believe that it took me over two hours to place and mine all of those ores. But we've finally done it, and who baby, <laughs> the results are in. Uh, and we got a lot of stuff, so we'll start out with the good stuff, because I know you're dying to see the diamonds, right? Right? There we are. We got 1,989 diamonds. So sad. We were so close to 2,000 diamonds. 
And when those diamonds are crafted into blocks, that's how much they come out to. Which is not too bad, about three and a half stacks. The redstone, on the other hand, we have nearly 20,000 pieces. And once that redstone is crafted up into blocks, we got about this many blocks. Oh, I'm so excited for all our project potential. A little over 3,000 iron, a little over 12 and a half thousand copper, nearly 6,000 lapis, little over a double chest of coal, and almost 2,000 gold. And this is how all of that looks when it's crafted up into blocks. Well now guys, we have a huge, huge problem. I have enough wealth to make a sextuple beacon out of every single precious material in the game, except netherite. However, I lack the proper amount of beacons to make that magic happen. So I guess you know what we're doing in the next episode. But in the meantime, don't forget to smash like, subscribe, and forever refer to me as Elon Musk.